What up everyone, it's your man xman 87 here bringing you another Marvel Legends video and what I have for you today is the Marvel Legends 2024 Spider-Man Retro Wave Jack-O-Lantern review. Before we get into everything, if you could please leave a thumbs up like rating on the video, it'll help show your support for my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Now with that said, let's go! Jack-O-Lantern was later renamed to Mad Jack. The original Jack-O-Lantern was Jason Philip McIndale who later became Hobgoblin. This version is really the Mad Jack persona. The identity of the character got very convoluted in the storytelling through comics. So you had one where it was Levins, who was another Jack O' Lantern, which was a Captain America and Ghost Rider enemy. There was the third and fourth carnations as Mad Jack, which were enemies to Spider-Man and Daredevil, like Daniel Beckhart. The other was Mysterio's cousin, Terry Beck, and then other times it wasn't her, and then it's both at the same time. Yeah, it's very, very confusing, and I'm not going to get into all that. But to put it simply, the second Mad Jack, Maguire Beck, cousin and apprentice of Mysterio, former assistant to the first Mad Jack, Daniel Beckhart, uses a combination of Goblin and Mysterio tech, which is assisted through a robotic black cat that Beckhart jokingly called Maguire. Alright, this pumpkin head sculpt is literally fire because it absolutely is. It is amazing the way they captured the pumpkin head. Like, you can see the Tampo Deco has this kind of grainy, I don't want to say texture, but you know, well, Deco. And it's absolutely stunning the way they made the pumpkin shaped eyes and the mouth. Yeah, that is, it's just mind blowing, man. It's blowing me away. Look at the flames here. Like I said, on fire, it has this nice translucency. It bounces light real well. Damn, just damn, <laughs> what a head sculpt, man. Then you got his scarf right there that's texturized also, which is surprising because normally when they do things like this for comic figures, it's always just flat, you know what I mean? They'll sculpt it, but never any kind of textures. And then look at how beautiful this torso is. Then nice scaly armor. That is so good looking, and it reflects off the light beautifully. I mean, look at that shimmer. That is gorgeous, man. And butterfly joints. Yo, we, normally we don't get this when they do, like, scaly armor. We don't get butterfly joints with that. Hasbro, thank you for going above and beyond here. And I definitely see this torso being reused for Triton of the Inhuman, so <laughs> definitely need that. Uh, great looking arms, uh, these these are really good looking arms, and another thing, these are new gloves, and if you look closely, look at the seam work, man, they actually sculpted the seams, as you can see right there, and kind of like that stitching uh, kind of look, oh, man, are you serious, and right there as well, and it has a slight wash, this is Toy Biz level stuff, Remember, Toy Biz used to do this with the gloves. Add a lot of texture. Look, textures all over the gloves and the seam work. It's like, I've been noticing that a lot this year with Legends. They're just doing a lot of texturized details, and that makes me happy. I mean, look at the Logan from the Wolverine 50 Years pack with the sculpted hairs, and it's painted on top of that to line it up. The, you know, sculpted details on his uh, shirt. I mean, even with Scarlet Spider right there, the texturized, the hood, you know, things that they would normally keep flat, they're adding textures and seams, and <laughs> it's just amazing. I'm noticing that a lot. Even with that tombstone, yeah, like, texturized socks, like, what? <laughs> they're really killing it with the details, and I'm happy to see. It makes me think that, you know... 2023, which, you know, you guys heard me say, I think was one of the, is the worst uh, year for Marvel Legends during the modern Hasbro era. And I just feel like now they took a hit last year to come back stronger this year and give us more of what we want. And, you know, I was very vocal about it last year that it's time we get more texturized details on our comic figures. And it's so great to see that. You know, texturized scarf, texturized gloves with the seam work, you know, scaly armor with butterfly joints. Uh, this is making me absolutely happy. And as exhausting as it was last year to be vocal, being frustrated as a Marvel Legends fan, you know, it's 
it's now it's now paying off, man. I'm I'm seeing the changes and I'm loving it. Look at this pumpkin belt. That's really cool. The pumpkins are not detailed, but that's fine because I mean, it's uh, a lot of times in the comics it was just flat like this. That is really cool. That pig is there to plug another pumpkin bomb. We'll get into accessories in a bit. The crouch the crotch piece is also scaly. You know, he reuses that Bucky cap. I want to say it was the updated Bucky cap legs, right? Uh, so you got the that Buccaneer boot style. I like it. I like it a lot. And top to bottom, this Mad Jack figure is amazing. And yes, I call him Mad Jack. I've been calling this character Mad Jack my whole life, so it's not going to change. I'm not going to call him Jack O' Lantern in this review because it is really Mad Jack to me. And this is a great updated version of Mad Jack. Toy Biz actually did a Mad Jack figure back in their Spider Man classic spin off line. So it's great to finally see an update. And that is one I wanted updated from one of those spin off lines. So. I'm definitely happy to add this guy into my Spider-Man collection. Now for accessories, he has a separate pumpkin bomb that he can hold in his hand. And it has a very firm grip. As you can see, I'm moving the figure and it doesn't fall off, which is great. Uh, you can just remove that. You see the hole right there. It'll plug into his belt right there for storage. Has a little nice pop to it. And there you go. You can have him with his belt looking complete. Then he has fists for alternate hands. And again, you can see the seam work on the hands right there. That just looks lovely. And lastly, he has his pumpkin glider, which looks like a tabletop spinner. <laughs> but uh, it has the pegs right here that obviously plugs into his feet. And it's a really nice sculpt. I like that. It looks really good. The tip part right here uh, is removable. So, you know, just take your fingernail and pop that out. And it has this hole that you can plug into one of these clear three-point ball stands. And uh, I think that's, the, I don't know what the actual name for this stand is, but you, you, you know which ones I'm talking about. Just plug that in, and now you can have him gliding on the glider so he looks like he's in flight. And to, just to demonstrate that, it's pretty easy. Again, just plug in those feet where the pegs are, and pretty easy to get him balanced. I think it was a huge missed opportunity not including this stand or make a new flight stand with some flight effects similar to that Silver Surfer from the HasLab Galactus. It had a nice effect as a stand. In the comics, there's normally some flames coming out of that. I did use the Frankie Ray Nova uh, base to kind of prop it up, but it was only good to block that stand from my photos. You can't really just take this glider and sit it on top of the stand that would have been awesome if you were able to do this but no it just it it doesn't work and it's a really nice looking glider it's a shame it doesn't have a nice flight effect stand to display with they got to get rid of these this is just not cutting it it's not sturdy it looks ugly yeah hopefully we get some new flight effects stand soon but if you're not going to use a display stand on your shelf and you're just going to hang them up on a wire or something you know, just make sure you put that piece in there. Keep it in there because that looks like it's going to be easy to lose. So so make sure you don't lose that. And if you have the Spider-Man Retro Wave Animated Series Black Cat figure, that comes with a Black Cat accessory, which you can give to this Mad Jack and use it as Maguire. To articulate Mad Jack, he looks about that far up and that far down. You're going to get better up movement than down. It doesn't really look that much down. And it moves left to right. It does pivot. And it does rock around. The pivoting is not that much. Even though the ball joint right here. It looks like it's very spacey. So is it the scarf? Oh yeah it's the scarf that's blocking it. Otherwise I'm like oh, that, that ain't right. So definitely the scarf limiting the motion right there. But you might be able to play around with it. With shifting the scarf a bit. So yeah there you go. His arms, they move about that far up, down. You got the butterfly joints that move that far forward and that far back. Hope you can see that well on camera because he's got a big flaming head. Uh, you got the bicep swivel, double jointed pinless arms. You got the wrist swivel, wrist hinge. The ab crunch is decent. 
and moves that far forward. Actually, it's a better app crunch than that. All right. Uh, and that far back. So good movement there. You got the hard way swivel. Legs move about that far apart. Kicks up that high. Kicks that far back. Not a full frontward split. He's got some good motion at the legs. Thigh swivel. Double jointed pinless knees. And oh, look at that. Oh, so close to heel to the mad jack butt bro and uh you got the calf swivel right there boot swivel whatever you want to call it ankles move up and down and they rock all around time to compare so here is mad jack next to the hobgoblin here is mad jack next to mysterio here is mad jack next to one of his rivaled enemies daredevil and lastly here is mad jack next to spider-man and now to wrap things up my final rating is a 9.5 out of 10 for a comic figure, this has a lot of details while still having those nice, smooth, flat parts, and it creates a very nice blend. I always said that a great head sculpt will define the rest of the figure, for the most part, and this one does with the translucent flaming effect, the yellow parts on the inside that brings out the carved out eyes and mouth in the pumpkin, alongside the tampography deco, but the rest of the figure also defines itself with great details to follow. Greatly sculpted scales and the gloves with seams, textures, and a slight wash. Hard to tell on camera because my lights are very bright, but it's there. The wash is there. Doesn't look overdone with the way how Toy Biz used to do it, making it look like dirt. I hated that. Never want my figures to look like they were played with in the mud. <laughs> but the rest felt reminiscent to Toy Biz's level of details. We'll definitely get a Triton and a pinless classic cap after seeing what's presented here. Nice color palettes along with great accessories too. The disc glider is awesome, but it needed a proper flight stand. And he also needed Maguire, but like I showed you before, if you have that retro black cat, then you are good. Definitely one of many standouts in this wave. A major difference compared to last year's underwhelming line of comic figures, and you can make a case for 2022 as well, but I'm seeing changes for the better this year, having more unique sculpts, texturized details, seams of line work on these comic figures, which they normally only do for MCU, and I'm loving what we've been getting here for Marvel Legends in 2024. Now I kick it back to you. What do you think of this Mad Jack figure? Is this a character you want on your Spider-Man side villain shelf? What are some other Spider-Man side villains would you like to see get some love in the Legends line? Comment below. Let me know. We'll chat about it. Thanks for watching another Marvel Legends video. Please follow me on Instagram if you haven't already at xman87. Hit the notification bell so you always know when my latest videos are up. Share and subscribe if you're new. See you on the next review. Peace, peace.